Anshu Gupta is joining me now. <laughs> Anshu, you've got the plain white wall. I've got slightly better than a plain white wall. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Uh, kind of similar question, because we have kind of an American and an Indian audience, uh, for the folks in the United States who don't know what your organization is and what it does, a small thumbnail sketch if you can. Uh, so a uh, most important thank you, Mr. Sanjeev, and all at India Spur to you know uh, take it up and and this is this is a, a complicated moment for all the people in the world and particularly in India you know uh, we know that uh, everyone is appreciating the informal economy of uh, India but informal economy means a large number of people who survive on on daily wages uh, or or on the on the farming and. Uh, that is what we have seen in the last few days, few weeks, that how millions of people started walking back to their, their native villages because um, there is issue in the jobs in the city. And my whole worry is that, uh, you know, when you when you go back to the villages, do you have enough uh, employment opportunities? Because ultimately people in India migrated from the villages uh, to, to get some jobs. So there is a scenario where you do not have a job in the city. You do not have a job in the village. So you are somewhere stuck. And when I talk about India, it's all about millions and millions of uh, people. Uh, and, and the whole focus so far has been on the on the migrants who are stuck in the cities. But uh, and unfortunately, you know, India has always, uh, uh, like many other countries, uh, actually has, has ignored its villages where we have more than 70 percent of our population, which is, I believe, is going to increase with this particular crisis. Uh, so we are we are in the middle of something where you have more people and less resources if you talk about village india so that's what we are that's what we are focusing more not that we are not working in the cities uh, we are uh, but our larger focus is the village india right now uh, and that is where uh, you know most uh, uh, distressed uh, news will start coming in for sure which is already there What is what are the what are the crises that you see today, and what are the ones that you're likely to see in the next few weeks and months? So, to be honest, for sure, uh, as of now, the the displacement became uh, one of the bigger uh, you know issue in India, much more than the the threat of the virus. It was the displacement and the, and the reverse migration which started happening, and that's what the entire world saw. We all saw that how people, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm also I'm also talking on a larger thing that. Uh, it is also the trust deficit, um, which I think people like us have created uh, in the last uh, you know few decades, where we didn't understand maybe the right way of living. I mean, if if these millions of people do not trust any of the any of the setup, any of the employer, government, neighborhood, and they just start walking, you know, hundreds of kilometers, there is something which we have done wrong. I mean, if we see the fundamental thing, because this. Uh, after this virus, when the world opens up, uh, we have to be really, really, uh, you know, thinking a lot about how we are dealing with it. And uh, so as of now, hunger and starvation certainly is a, is a bigger thing. Uh, and I, I can see three things happening, uh, especially for these migrant uh, communities stuck in the cities or jobless in the cities or already gone to the villages. First part is the uh, hunger and uh, um, uh, starvation and largely hunger to start with as of now because it's still in control to some extent. Uh, it is followed by, in India, unfortunately, a very vicious uh, debt cycle because there are there are local people who give um, a loan on very high interest rate. Uh, this is again a part of the informal uh, part where people even, you know, get um, 100 rupees at an interest of 10, 15 rupees a month. So you can imagine. And then they are not even able to pay the interest. So never, never, ever they will be able to pay principal. So if you get into that trap, you're gone forever. And the third thing which uh, can happen if we really do not uh, speed up, scale up our work is again, very distressed uh, migration back to the cities where the cities are not there, which can offer you a lot of jobs right now. But because if we don't take care of the hunger part right now, it will become a compulsion for people to really, really come back. So it will be uh, another, another, you know, lot of forced uh, migration back in the cities so that's why that's why this particular time is extremely important that how do we really take care of hunger of people well one of the things that um really quickly 
how do you have, what's the infrastructure, right? I mean, earlier we heard from Feeding America that there's 60,000 pantries that they're working with every year, that there's millions of volunteers. What do you do in a country like India, especially in the rural portions of the country? What happens when people go hungry? I mean, there's already people in the city that have been hungry. It's not that COVID is the introductory uh, sort of moment where people have been hungry in India, but what kind of infrastructure exists that you can actually piggyback onto? So one of the biggest, very robust uh, system is also the voluntary organizations all across. So today, if I talk about Goonj itself, Goonj has a network of a few hundred uh, local grassroots partner organizations. Uh, plus, the, uh, we, we can always, uh, you know, actually purchase a lot from the farmers so that their income is, uh, you know, remains same or at least it is intact. And uh, also, also the village economy really, uh, you know, starts happening. Then we also have government PDS uh, public distribution system and all. But I think I'm I am really really relying a lot on the on the network of the voluntary organizations uh, across the country, which has a direct connect uh, uh, with, the, with the people. So in the last uh, few days of our work, we have done almost about six hundred thousand uh, kgs of uh, you know dry ration and other things to the remotest parts of about twenty states of India now, uh, and this is with about one hundred and fifty partner organizations because that's the grid which we have been able to create. Uh, and also one important part where we are working as Goon and, and, you know, is that how do we procure more and more from the village itself? And, and that can happen because we are, we are a country which is known for agriculture, right? And right now the major crisis is actually food. I mean, anyone who has food is inside home and the person who is not, who doesn't have food is outside. It's very simple. I mean, the, the world is divided in two parts that way. Someone who has food, someone who does not have food. Hmm. That's a sobering thought. Anshu Gupta, founder and director of Goonj. Thanks so much for joining us tonight.